Welcome to our kickoff event of Everyone Has a Voice. We are starting our 2019-2020 season of poetry supporting our local poets. And it is my pleasure at this time to say thank you. I want to give an opening thanks because I want to thank Paul Engel, the director of the Brockton Public Library, for supporting Philip Soros for supporting the mission in this community, the most important um, to the ongoing continuity of keeping the Brockton Public Library system and venues open for individuals like ourselves for our community. So I want to give an open thanks to Paul Engel. I also want to take a moment to thank Mark Lindy from the um, Brockton Community Access Director, it always supporting all the nonprofits and many things in our community, taking videos to promote it to the television of our local cable access network because there are many people who are not able to come. And we're able to share these moments with them in our community and the surrounding towns as well. I also want to take a moment to thank everyone who is present here. I am excited. I am excited to see, to listen, and, um, and get this going and encourage to continue it on. And let's bring the creative arts on because we need it. Right. And of course, I'm Ali Brioso, your host. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin with the open mics. So we have many individuals who have taken time to write some poetry who want to share about themselves. And I'm going to begin to call them up so that they can share their poems. And in the end, we're going to close with our features. So we're going to begin first with Beverly. Beverly, it is my pleasure to ask you to come up and share the poetry that you have. Hi, my name is Beverly T, and I love to read poetry. I am from Brockton, and I have about 169 poems, but I won't read them all today. <laughs> and um, I'm very shy a little bit, but I love to read poetry. So I'm going to read you all um, probably three, and I'm going to start off with this one. It's called I Dream. I dream of the sun, the moon and stars, the city lights and fancy cars. I dream of a movie at a drive-in theater, then I dream of something even greater. A, river, a world without hunger, strife, or pain, where you're never left out in the rain. A world of peacefulness, always at ease, everyone healthy without a disease. Families of all shapes and colors, always supportive and helping each other. So sit back and don't worry what it means. Just remember it is okay to dream. Okay. Um, You'll we'll probably enjoy this one today because it talks about winter, <clears throat> pardon me, a little bit. So I wrote this on November 8th of 2017. The mountains are ice blue. The trees are perfect green. I know this sounds like something that you may have seen. When I see this grand beauty, it's a wonder to behold. All my senses are awakened and it touches my very soul. I smell the sweet aroma in the kitchen. I hear angels singing for you to listen. Behind the beautiful scenery, the kids are playing tag. I can truly taste the goodies that they have in their bags. Everything is okay, and it truly touches my heart. Now, maybe for once, things won't fall apart. So use your five senses and your imagination, too. I know that it will surely get you through. So if you think you cannot make it, or well, didn't start out with the plan, just close your eyes and enter into your winter wonderland. Thank you very much. Um, I have one more. It's called, These Visions Are Yours. The sun is so beautiful, shining behind the trees. I have to picture this along with the cool breeze, keeping this in mind along with so much hope and the warmth of a bath with that sweet smelling salt. I'll paint a, paint a picture, one you may have seen, keeping it in your sight, knowing it's not a dream. The color blue so vivid, it glows in the night with a touch of crystal shining like a light. Picture a mountain or the highest hill, then there's a ladybug on the windowsill. Picture this and anything you can imagine. These visions are yours, so go ahead and grab them. Always be mindful and keep your head held high. You've made it this far because you said, I'll try. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Thank you, Beverly, for such motivational and inspired words. And that's the beauty of poetry, because we can inspire, we can send a message without having the typical dictation or someone getting on you. And before you know it, someone can receive the beauty of your words because you brought life into it. And that is what poetry is all about. So it is my pleasure to call Jason Wright to come and share his poetry with us. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Uh, my name is Jason Wright. Um, I am the editor of a poetry and art magazine online. It's called oddballmagazine.com. Um, I'm a certified peer, special, certified peer specialist and a mental health advocate. Um, a lot of my poetry is kind of around uh, mental health um, uh, and, and how, I've, how I've used uh, poetry to get through a lot of things in my life. So I have two books here. Um, this is my first book. It's called uh, A Letter to the World, and I'm going to read a poem from it. And this is my new book. It's called Train of Thought, and uh, it's poems from the Red Line. Shocker, it was written on the Red Line. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's why it's called Poems from the Red Line. So um, this first poem is called A Letter to the World, and I dedicate it to my friend who um, passed away. Her name was Amanda Wilding. And Amanda and I, um, when we were in high school, she started this charity called High Five for Charity. And uh, she passed away when she was like 27, uh, um, which is unfortunate. She was a really great person. So um, I wrote this poem to her, and I, and I titled my book, A Letter to the World. Uh, <clears throat> letter to the World, dedicated to Amanda Wilding. I want to write a letter to the world that never wrote to me. I do it best through poetry, mimicking sweaty rhymes and motion sickness. A poet standing tall, speaking wisdom. Maybe not knowing the world as you may see it, severed synapses keep me constantly thinking. I wonder what I should write about to tell you where I stand, to tell you where I think I belong. I belong in the chorus of a song I once belonged in wards sheltering my storm. I once wandered highway roads to find my solace sinking, rising with the sun because I couldn't bear sleeping, collapsing in the park with two strangers standing by me, sleeping for a century but only really seconds, wandering the willows to find my shelter, with Conroe Burr singing songs to me and wearing my father's sweater. He was sick at the time. It reminded me of him. I never knew I would persuade him to pick up writing. I kept tuned to my dream as far as I could see it. Once I wanted to be a millionaire, I never stopped dreaming. I thought my silence was golden, but I was only bronze. Couldn't stop talking, didn't know who I was. Met a friend who has been with me through poetry and music. Lost a couple friends to death and overdose. One high school friend I missed the most. She told me she was sick once after school, that she had a disease that would take her. It took her at 27. I saw the greatest minds of my generation stolen from me, and I saw it under my eyes, and gravity outweighed me. But I keep survival on my mental like a rash of poison ivy, and I understand I will die one day, and I hope you never cry for me. But while I'm here, I write with passion for people who pass and people who believe that there is really something, something I don't understand. But I never get sick of fighting, realizing that I write with fire, ocean, and lightning, and where I am, I never really see it. I'm a poet, and with speech, I have my freedom. I didn't mean to dedicate this to an angel's passing, but Amanda wrote and was dedicated to making things happen with passion. Even in high school, she was my oddball companion, and we worked on the cover. It was three astronauts, me, her, and Nick V on our own oddball planet. Because back then, I was sad and only had poetry to prove it. My family called it quits and moved to separate addresses. I kept on with poetry, music, the motion, and movement. Because I could write and some cannot, and that's why anger exists. That's why slit wrists and broken fists exist. And that is what I realized, that writing poetry was my sanctuary and has kept me alive. And now I write and I write still listening to music. An ocean of love I try to create and keep my dreams breathing. Because you never know when it's your time to go. And when you can't see the ocean, then therein lies the end. When the tidal waves come, and believe me, it does in every dream I've always had, remember me for poetry, friends. It's all I am. Um, so as I said, I like write a lot of poems on the, on, uh, when I was on going from my house to uh, a crappy job that I worked at, uh, I used to write poems on the train because that's how I got through it because I had so much anxiety. Um, it was like really unspeakably bad. Um, so I, I wrote this book right here, A Train of Thought. And um, my job now is much better. I'm a certified peer specialist. And uh, if you don't know what that is, that's someone who has, you know, lived experience and, and shows people how to get through it. Anyway, this poem's called Grace on the Train. And it's a sad poem. And um, just a kind of a trigger warning, it, it deals with, um, deals with, uh, 
It's, it's just a sad, sad poem, so, so strap in. Okay. Uh, Grace on the Train. Here the musicians play softly. A lady sips tea reading her book. We see her, though she doesn't see herself quite yet. She's never been respected or loved quite right. She lost her husband to a cancer call, and now she sits quietly listening to the soft rhythm of the musicians. Her son's in prison, and she misses him. Sipping her tea, I see her. She seems like her name may be Grace. The only softness she maintained are the lines on her face above her brow. Too far from home, she wants to go home now. Grace, won't you stay a while and let us see your smile? The music overwhelms her, and she forgets about her world. I look up from my daydream already at downtown crossing in the middle of Boston, and I feel awesome, and I want Grace to feel the same. I'm sure Grace is not her name. She sits quietly on the train, not speaking to me or speaking at all. Imagine her wondering when she can come home and why life has to be so hard. Her husband died in 2006. Her son Jack was 18. Her daughter Lucy was 12. The days were different after Dad died. They were darker, less light crept in. Jack got caught up in the violence of a bitter bet, one that couldn't be forgotten. Lost in gunshots, his friend ended up in a coffin, and Jack sits in prison still waiting for the warden. As for Lucy, she always was smart, good in school, varsity jacket on her shoulder. But sometimes life takes over, and this time it wasn't expected. The drunk driver blindsided her with his brand new Lexus. The rain starts falling hard as the traffic stops, as the ambulance approaches the broken glass, as the medics surround Lucy. Grace can hear sirens from the train and wonders when this rain will stop. She doesn't know yet about Lucy as she listens to the music when her phone rings at Park Street while the sullen street performer sings sadly, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. And she drops the phone and weeps. Listening to the music, she hangs her head and prays softly, please don't take my sunshine away. And Grace covers her head and exits the train into the falling rain, trying to find peace in all her pain. All right, this is my last poem. Um, it's called... Um, Let's see, I guess I'll do delete, destroy, and return to the world. Um, so a lot of my poems you can find on oddballmagazine.com. It's, um, it's a poetry and art magazine that's open to the public. Uh, you can check it out. Um, every Tuesday I have a column, it's called Jagged Thoughts. So this is my last poem, it's called Delo delete, destroy, and return to the world. And, and all these poems were written like in a very anxiety-induced state, so that's, that's the idea of these poems. I'm going to calm down, write a thought that has meaning now. So here I am in loss as I've ever been. I have two things to do, sleep or create. I can't sleep because I slept too late, so I'm going to sit down and try to create. Words can be beautiful when you let them strike the heart with meaning. Words can be ugly when you lose feeling, and if your heart is still beating, then you haven't lost feeling. There's a lot of emotions up in the air. Ask God, is he there, and you might feel something there. Ask the devil, and you know he's always there, being the catalyst for destruction and despair. I don't need anyone. I just need to find strength in myself. Like my dad once told me, put the helmet over my head. Say, protect my thoughts from leaking out like a leaky faucet. But I know I have this little imp inside making me noxious. Every time I clean out my closet, he throws more shit on it. But honestly, my health needs a booster shot. Thought I was strong enough, guess not. But I have to find the strength that lies in me somewhere. Bipolar is just another place, and I've already been there. And diagnosing me different, I really don't care, because we all have our own crosses to bear. I'm strong enough and just down in the rough, trying to dig up enough stuff and bury it deep down, I guess. I should let it all out, cry on your shoulder, but you know I'm not going to do that. Because every day I get older, I become more like a soldier, and eagle eyes stare on a world grown colder. And yeah, it's not over. I know I'll get through this. I'm tough enough to deal with this shit without turning it all to weakness. Just have to pretend that everything is okay again, and keep on with the peace, and keep on with the pen. Oh, there's, there's more. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I thought it was the end, too. Because I try to be who I am when truth is I don't know what I am or where I've been and why I can't find my mind time to sleep again. But the world is peace and zen. And if I look hard enough, something will tell me that I'm more than just a psych ward celebrity. I have to keep it going one foot after another. Be real, stay real, and find something in nothing because I know I have it in me to transcend through this negativity. I've got to keep it in center, the cipher, the circle, the hole in the aft, the 2020 eyes I see through. This is just a hurdle, and you know I'm stronger than this. Kill the negativity and let the poison seep out of my skin. Collect it in a pan and put it in the trash bin. Delete, destroy, and return to the world. 
Make something out of this pain. This world is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. And uh, my hometown is Cambridge, so you already know that I know about the red line. Okay? Yes, and I am so ecstatic that they finally fixed the bridge over by the Charles River from Kendall because I literally take moments there to pause. And you know what? Mental health awareness is real. If, if, if we can't find ways uh, to self-heal, there are venues, and the most important is to hear inspired in words being given to those who are struggling, even we ourselves in our daily ways, days. And at this time, this is what poetry is all about. Sometimes, what I know most times when you do struggle with depression and mental health challenges, you can't find the right words to describe what's going on internally, what's going on mentally, and because there are no words to describe those entities, and they're very hard. And sometimes people establish and develop writer's block because they're stuck in a zone in a way inside themselves. And we promote that here, open mic. I encourage, continue to keep writing. Inspire, definitely want to look at the books that you have. Very, very interesting, and most, that's what this is all about. We're here to inspire and show that words can still be brought to life outside of social media and outside of Facebook. Alrighty, so it is my pleasure to invite Sheila. Sheila Taylor, please come up. Thank you. So this poem is entitled Mid Cape Highway. And it's based on a photograph that a gentleman took on the way down to the Cape, on the Mid-Cape Highway, of a deer that had just been struck by a car, was lying on the side of the road. Mid-Cape Highway. No one claims this loss on a doldrum's eve, this shattered doe, soprano light, wavering on the eyes, unsighted now and dimmed. The moon is swollen red and night hangs from the trees, all touched with a bloody path across the slow shift of grieving leaves. Ordnance lies scattered on the ground, the shrapnel burst of headlight, battered license plate couched in tangled weeds. She lies bound in a night's dark shroud, a gutted sum of all her fragile parts, that last dark leap across the street. Black-robed crows will soon sing matins, their voices raucous with glorias, the dawn a wafer on the tongue. Every time I read something, I take notes, um, <laughs> lots of notes for even a word that I haven't used for a long time or a phrase that I can incorporate into a poem. And I had read um, an, an article in Discover years and years ago about the, um, the discovery of a bog woman, a woman who had been buried in a peat bog, and uh, they found her. And so this is called Postcard from the Duke, the Bog Woman. She's like any other woman, if being 900 years old can be considered common, disentombed from between layers of boggy earth, her skin golden and bronze hard, not notable in dress or station in life, ordinary, except for one oddity, a big toe made of dark wood strapped to her left foot. It's a perfectly carved prosthesis with a bar-relief toenail that never has to be trimmed. Scratches on the bottom, little pebble indents that showed she walked on it for some time before she died. But it must have tripped her up occasionally, for it was much larger, much longer than a big toe should be. Was it whittled in cruel jest? fashioned out of proportion, larger than life, so it would never wear down, an extended lifetime warranty, so to speak. Perhaps her flesh and blood toe was an aberration even before some gangrenous wound caused its removal, a giant congenital defect that dangled precariously belong the length of her sandal, a bloated object of derisive laughter that made the mere act of walking to the well each day a painful journey fraught with taunts and humiliations. Perhaps the simple woman of the bog became extraordinary after her amputation, a sorceress 
able to whip off her magic appendage, delight small children, horrify others to shrink into silence. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sheila. It was very a true divine pleasure in hearing your poetry. And I love the energy, but most the enthusiasm that you have when you read the poetry, and it's beautiful. Very, very, very beautiful. And next, I'm going to call Linda Thayer. Please come up and share your poems as well. Want to take a bounce off? Is it Jason? Yeah. Want to take a bounce off of uh, what you're saying about a train, poetry on a train? Because I, I have a poem called "Incident on a Train," so I'm going to take a bounce off of you. Incident on a train. We sat in the stupor of our own confusion, numbed by our own uncertainty, embarrassed for his sake, not wanting to call attention to ourselves, gnawed by the need to touch but not intrude. We were impotent before the image of a powerful human weakness. A brown paper bag of evidence protrudes from an amber pocket, broadcasting an indictment of sobering truth, narcotic notice of his mystery of pain. Stewards lift him in uniformed practicality, unconscious glasses slipping from his face as easily as a glass might have slipped from his hand, as easily as his senses had slipped from consciousness. Deposited at the station, he lies freighted on the platform in a gray December sun, more like the sleeping child he was than the man he had become, equally vulnerable to sun and wind and snow, to malice, indifference, and love. Doors rolled shut, curtains closing on his unfinished drama, and we exit stage forward, jolted towards our destination, desperately trying to applaud, applaud the illusion that we are somehow different. Incident on Street. I want to take a bounce, and I've forgotten your name. First, OK. I love rhyme. I swear to God, I love rhyme. If you can make it work for you, it, it, it's golden. And it always amazes me that um, something as simple as an empty beer bottle can set up a poem. So this is kind of short, but this is called Bottle of Beer. And I saw this bottle of beer, I was driving to work, and it was just sitting on the island in the middle of traffic. Bottle of Beer. Little brown bottle of amber bliss, open mouth greeting my frothy kiss, answer to all my Friday schemes, fill my heart with amber dreams. Be my partner for tonight, chase away this empty fright of nowhere left for me to hide, of no one standing by my side. Little brown bottle now drained of bliss, shining in the morning's kiss. Did you also tell me lies of emptiness in amber disguise? Wow. And then something triggers poems. There's a place in Abington where you can shoot pool. And I used to shoot pool with my nephews who were kind of abandoned by their mom. Um, <laughs> So uh, this, is, uh, this is about shooting pool. My nephew Nick taught me how to shoot pool. He was a half pint, half orphan kid who already had moves so cool. His eyes would light with a wish and a dream whenever he spied a table of felt, a field of amber green. He could fire that cue mad like a rocket and slap that four in the corner pocket like nothing you've ever seen. Or tap that cue, have it hug the rail till it nudged the nine that fell without fail, soft and clean. I saw heads turn and drop their chatter when a shattering break would splatter and scatter all 15. I saw the shot resembling his fate, banked to the side, left behind, hard behind the eight. And time came, it came the time that I was finally able to rack them up and run the table. And he had the game in him to chalk it up and grin because it wasn't about the loss or the win. It was time with him. Yeah, after a while, it was grace and style. It was English and drawer and shots of awe and the magic of the game. And so tonight, when we rack them up, I hope it will be the same. 
because my nephew Nick taught me how to shoot pool. I have one last poem that's related to that. When we were growing up, if you were hooked on alcohol, you would go out and get pickled. When I bought my first computer, and more recently, when I bought an iPhone, um, I've been addicted to computers. Um, and I have discovered eight ball and nine ball on the computer, so shooting pool has become an addiction on my, on my uh, cell phone. But this poem is called Getting Pixeled, Buying a Computer. Have I let a demon in to numb the pain of time? Electronic relief stealing life like a thief, a PC monkey for a digital junkie enduring a loss like mine. Ciao. Thank you, Linda. And that's where we are at in our society today. Very on point. And I love the way that you're bouncing off of everyone else's energy, so I'm going to bounce a little bit off of yours. Because in our society, when we can be stuck in a zone, in, in our computers, everything's at the phone, you go out to dinner, you go, let's go back to the red line. You go on the train, what do you do? Everybody's engaged on your phone. And this is, this is, so the creativity, you are zoned, stuck in time within yourself. But when you begin to write and when you begin to form expressions and articulate your thought process, that is actually an action that we need in our society today because our youth are being handicapped and disabled because we have sedated them with these gadgets. So where are our tomorrow's futures of our new creative thought thinkers? That's why we ourselves are here to express our words, share them, and encourage our youth who also have the ability to be creative and bring forth poems. So our next individual, it is my true pleasure. My name is Ali again, and um, Dina is Diverse Initiatives Neighborhood Association. I'm intertwined with many organizations, support many in the community, and most the residents in the city of Brockton. She's a local resident, and um, she's a friend. And I just said, hey, Trish, are you coming to the event? She was like, sure, this is what we do. We say, sure, why not, kumbaya, here we just flow. <laughs> Ali's energy, Choo, come over here. So, and she was like, it's amazing that you don't know what we have. We can spend years in time with each other, but we don't even know that the person sitting next to you is actually creative himself. She has an inclement. She was like, Ali, I love poetry. I would have never um, known that if I didn't invite her and said, hey, you know, this is what's happening. And she was so excited, and she said, you know what, I want to write some poem and go print it. She went, she went to her father's house, she printed, and here she is. So now, City of Brockton, we're building our community. We are emphasizing the need for creative arts, and this is what this venue is about. Trish, come and share your words. Yes. I can write better than um, read my poetry, but I'm going to give it a go. Um, I brought another poem that I'm going to read first, other than the one that I um, wrote last night and printed today. Um, I just appreciate the fact that um, everybody that's come up has had some kind of struggle or heartbreak because all the broken pieces that we are help build us to be a stronger, united um, front. So this one's titled, In Between. Dreams deferred, the journeys I've taken, left me feeling incomplete. My life's been tough, some were lessons learned, some I've needed to repeat. I am in between, new and old, hot and cold, look deep within ourselves for truth. Have we lost sight of our purpose, chasing idols that robbed our youth? Reject distractions of material things that never satisfies. The devil keeps us apart from God, breaking ties, he tries with his lies. We must search for the truth in the word, for the world offers uncertainty. There is only one way, that is Jesus, for life, eternity. Like a car engine, we drive through life. It's far from easy. Satan comes in, switches our gears. We're all getting greasy. We feel brokenhearted, hurt, burdened with thoughts that we've got ourselves to blame. Being stuck, stranded, desperate with a mountain of guilt and shame. Bound with chains, left in a junkyard full of sin, blinders put on us by lust of the flesh, buried deep within. A veil so heavy, it covers my eyes, came on me like a clever disguise, realized deception, 
cut Satan down to size? Can I reject the temptations that kept me from wanting more but never satisfied? Only when I stop looking for man's approval, knowing that God's always on my side. The adversary will strike at you hard if you feel his powers getting stronger. Rebuke his attack out loud, shouting, I will not take this any longer. Then anchor yourself to Christ. Give him all the things that kept you oppressed. Surrender what once bound you, feeling defeated, alone, and depressed. I've drowned out God's voice for many years, yet he still speaks to me, saying, I'm with you, beloved, in all of your storms. Let go of them and be free. There's a calm coming after the storm. I must trust and believe. An exchange that happens when we release and receive. So obey his commandments, love one another, forgive those who have hurt you. Remain in the word, praise him in all things, for his word is alive and true. I've been healed from some brokenness from deep within, knowing I'm forgiven and God forgets all my sin. His light shines bright, even in the darkest night. While my walk with him gets stronger, faith puts fear completely out of sight. You hold every tear I've cried in your loving hand. Satan is defeated, for I boldly take a stand, wearing the full armor of God, prayerful warrior, defending my home. God is my safety net, always with me, so I'm never alone. I don't know if I said what the title of that one was. It was called In Between. This one is titled, You Were Made. I wrote this last night. You were made for so much more than you give yourself, yourself credit for. A pretty face just to multiply the human race, to be ravished, caressed. Must we always be stressed? When you look in the mirror, who do you see? A vision of God's creation, but is that enough for me? Or do you dare, must not compare? Can we have an imperfect flair? This should be enough, it never is. The world rejects the very breath I take. Can we live up to our potential or relive every single mistake? We're living in troubled times, violent crimes. Do we react or just ignore and draw the blinds? No affect, lifeless numbing to the corruption in our head barely batting an eyelash when we hear that someone is dead. Don't become an emotionless void. You have a choice. Be a voice. Take a stand. There is no change if you wait on others. You matter. Extend a heart and a hand. Our fellow man is a dying breed. Be the difference. Plant a seed. Give one another a reason to hope. Don't let one more person die from shooting dope. What you do now could even change history. No more sitting in silence. Your present is but a mystery. This is not just my town, it is yours too. Be part of a force that's bigger than you. Seek opportunities to be your best. Reach out to the hurting, broken, and depressed. Be the light in a dark place. It's time to heal the human race. Be the reason a smile is on a stranger's face. Don't be callous to one's suffering. Be kind. Add to the healing of others' body, soul, and mind. Little things matter. You see a problem. Be part of the solution. Don't be a burden of society's pollution. You were made for so much more to see it and let it be your mission. It can change with a willingness to make a decision. Have a vision. Give it life and purpose. Open your heart. You can't begin a revolution if you don't do your part. Thank you. Thank you, Trish. That was beautiful and continue to encourage you. And this is what the platform is about. Write your poem, bring it out, share it. And it's a blessing because um, 
I am affiliated with the Christian Faith Ministry called Keys of the Kingdom Tabernacle Prayer, which is right next to the Brockton Cable Station on 33 North Main Street. And um, one of our ministers is here. She's a direct support to me, Minister Wardell. And I'm very grateful because um, to share in all different types of formats of expression that we can also incorporate spirituality. And it is always a true blessing and for me as a faith believer to be able to say, I get excited for everything. So I'm like, oh, wow, Minister, look at Wardell. We even have this over here. So anyways... Um, it is my pleasure also to embrace diversity and culture because the beauty of it, okay, so now I'm excited because I'm 50% Dominican, you know? So that means that Joseph Polycup is going to come and give us some beautiful poems in Creole. And it is my pleasure to say in English, English, see, I'm emphasizing Creole, okay? English, and also he also does poetry in the Creole, his native language as well. Joseph, it is my pleasure to welcome you once again. So I'm going to be waiting for you two poems today. The very first one is called Father Parizo. This is a priest. Um, I became a Protestant in, when I was 11 years old, but I was born in a Catholic church. For some reason or another, the priest of that church, which was next to my house, in the remote area where I was born, was so loving. I always think about him for the rest of my life. I'm going to always think about him. And every time, like I kept asking, did he really die? So this is a poem that I will be talking about Father Parizo. Father Parizo was a storyteller. When he preached, tears would fill his eye. He talked plainly and made direct connection to us children. He was like a lamb, always happy. He was the father that baptized me, the first white man I met with a pointed nose, so kind, meek, with an expressive voice and sense of humor, well-educated, but willing to bow down to serve the poor. His presence gave us a sense of God's beauty, fine face blue eyes, six feet tall, born of a rich European family, left it all to serve the needy. The trees, the rivers, his little church, and its members, these were the great loves of his life. He was hungry, even thirsty to serve the needy. He adored each one of us, as we elevated him as he was. Father Parizo made us feel the love of Christ. As he appeared to us as the bread we must eat to survive, he broke for the communion as, the, as he fed us with his love. He transformed himself into the wine we had to drink, for we were forever thirsty for his presence. As he was so righteous in his humility, we longed for the, for the Christ in him. I remember seeing him knee, uh, kneel down so sweetly with folded hands meekly. He prayed to Christ to save us poor children. He owned nothing but his little bed two or three pieces of clothes. We children surrounded him in the rectory to share his little food. A true image of Christ. Children were everything to him, for he lived in God's word. He, so, he surrendered his mind, heart, and soul to God. His life was guided by the Holy Spirit. I pray for such a soul and praised him, for he gave us his pride and future to come to live and serve us at Bene. Oh, I am in tears, for he did not have a proper funeral, a glorious send off. Father Parizo, that angel of God in Bene, Haiti, he is now in the shadow of God. He lives in the breeze, 
that Jesus brings to his heavenly kingdom, wherein all the heavenly crowns. Thank you. The second one I'm going to read is about when I was growing up in Port of Prince, we were surrounded with a lot of rich people, and they all used to get maids to work for them. But one of them, them that get the servant, she always mistreated her servants, and they worked for her. She think they were supposed to pray to her, doing whatever she wants. But sometimes she did meet some of her match. Some of them was really angry at her and would want to kill her. So this is a poem about a maid and her superior. It was already dark. All candles were turned off. No moonlight penetrated inside the gigantic house. No insects crawled. Without knocking, Madame Goose entered the room. She yelled, only it is only midnight. No maid sleep here until I give permission. And Madame's voice echoed like thunder in Jacqueline's head. So tired, she opened her eyes and fell as asleep so deep. Wake up, Jacqueline. You are here to do my job until it is done. She trembled with the loud voice of Madame Goose and awakened. She looked tired in her small eyes and long dark brown face. She got up and walked elegantly toward Madame Goose. She stood there looking at her red lips as wide as a U.S. warship in the wide sea. Madam, I am not this kind of maid who works from sunrise to sundown. She looked at Madame Goose from her head to her toes and said, you are not wise, Madam. I started at four o'clock this morning I wash and iron all the clothes, clean the house floors, wash the, wash the doors and windows, take care of the children. Don't you think it is time to give those hands and feet some rest after midnight? Thanks goodness, the Constitution gives me liberty and justice. Ah, oak tree dies, Goat eat its leaves. Are you disrespecting me in this new Eve's day, Jacqueline? No maids ever raise their voices in my house. They know I have a slap that can cut their head. You are talking to me about the Constitution? The Constitution is paper, my dear. No one cares about it, Jacqueline. When, I, when, I, when a maid enter my, enter my house, it is more precious than finding salvation from Jesus. This is a place that everyone wishes to enter to see fame and adventure. You should have been praying to me like Mother Teresa praying to Mother Mary. An empty sack, my dear, can't stand up I am the one who can improve your life. Salt doesn't boss that it is salty, but I treat you fairly, and you disrespect me so early? Do you really think you are free in a capitalist system? I will wash you closely and wholly. You are not in Cuba or Soviet Union. In America, we work hard. And for, the, and for the money. Madam, watches would never be white in front of chicken, but entered my room, awakens me after midnight is horrible enough. And you tell me you slap your maid? I would kick you so hard you would regret that you were ever born. In Cuba or Soviet Union, I may not be rich, but I would have an education for free. And I, I, I do not believe madams would treat me like you do. 
You called me all kind of names, lazy, slow, dummy, like yourself. Madam, keep your $300 a month, keep your fame, keep your popularity, I will keep my liberty, my God, my faith and dignity. Au revoir, Madame Goose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. It was a pleasure to hear and you say your poems again. Welcome for another season series. And uh, we're going to continue on with open mic. It's a pleasure for me to invite Michelle Shanks to come and share poetry. Please, Michelle, come and share some of your poetry with us. Hello, my name is Michelle, and I am a native of Brockton. Um, I've been writing poetry ever since I was a little girl. Poetry is a way to help me to resolve any problem, anything that I feel like might destroy me or might not just let me express myself to the world. I know that poetry helps me. It's helped me through a lot of things in my life. I love words. I love putting them down on paper and making them mean something. Here's my first one. It's entitled, Time. Time leaves us as experiences of life passes by the puffs of smoke which dissipate. That's the first one. <laughs> and here's another one. Reality. Reality faces us strong, hard, and fierce, trying to crumble spirits that rise to give daily life a chance. And here's my last one. And I am happy to be in the international who's who in poetry. And I will read that poem, which is entitled, Pain. Life continually pounding inflictions, desolations, internalizing issues of blood, pouring, exhausting, in and out of body and mind and soul, pain. Thank you. So that is our segment for open mic, but we have a closing open mic, and um, it is my pleasure to get my colleague, the originator, founder, and the one who began the Everyone Has a Voice, Philip Hosaurus. Philip, come and share your poem. First of all, <clears throat> let us show our appreciation for Allie. What a wonderful host. What an awesome job. So as we all know, this series is called Everyone Has a Voice. And 
as we know, there are communities out there, cities, people who don't have a voice, whose voices are quiet. This poem that I'm about to read was written 20 years ago, wow. at least. And unfortunately, <clears throat> I think it still holds up. It's called Keeper of the Quiet. The child rocked back and forth, silence, only solace. A different life lived within where a child remains a child. Keeper of the quiet, what secrets do you hold? Do you reach out your hand or keep it clenched? Colors that eyes focus on black and blue? Do you wish? Are you allowed? A proud man walks down the street. The color of his skin is not allowed. Doesn't matter that blood runs red. Sticks break kindred bones. Stones bruise tender flesh. Voices cut. Humanity bleeds. Keeper, what secrets? Choosing colors, the joy it brings. Why does a skin bring such hate? You question, but no answers avail. You reason, but still not allowed. You move on, always looking back. For fear is the color that we face. A child lays in bed. Darkness cannot hide. Blankets slowly pulled away. Silence. Tears slide down. Light cracks beyond. No escape. Keeper, what hold? Where do you go when the invasion begins? Do you reach for tomorrow? Do you pull on your heart to survive, hoping that too has not been stolen. A woman runs nowhere, trying to escape life's nightmare, vows broken, no time of day is safe. Invisible chains shackle minds, choices removed, hopelessness invoked. What secrets in the quiet? Guilt impales your wisdom. Hope replaces insanity. Laughter disguises your pain. Silence takes your hand on a journey of deceit. Somewhere, bombs are falling. Hatred smiles. A man beaten for his beliefs. People eating discarded waste. A baby sucks a mother's dry breast. A child sells his body, no longer his own. A name lost for memories. Mother Earth falls to knees, gathers silent tears. My children, my children, what secrets do you keep? How do you keep your secrets? in the quiet. <clears throat> so, when I awoke this morning, I had this overwhelming urge to write. One of my three favorite things to do. Ride my bike, listen to my iPod, the other two. But this could change in an instant, a split second. As I am writing this, my taste buds reveal my three favorite foods are cheeseburger, on the grill, rare, pizza, homemade with my hands, salmon broiled with lemon. But this could change in an instant, the blink of an eye. As I am writing this, my three favorite songs are Bullet by the Ballroom Thieves, Banana Pancakes, Jack Johnson, Human Touch, Bruce Springsteen. But this could change in an instant. 
the beat of a heart. And it has. When I first started writing this, my songs were Gravity, John Mayer. Take Five, Dave Brubeck. 20th Century Man, The Kings. As I thought about the people who care about me, I reflected on three. My wise individuals. Loneliness, reflection, and the three stooges. Who give of themselves to heal the wounds of loss, regret, remembrance. And they don't let me get away with it. And this too could change in an instant. Although they would tell you no, this could change in an instant. My three favorite memories, the reason I am writing this stream of consciousness, April 16th, 5, 10 a.m., October 22nd, 11, 13 a.m., the birth of my daughters. January 16, 1977, the night I met Linda. 11,737 days, 1,676 weeks and five days, 32 years, one month, 18 days. The beat of a heart, blink of an eye. A split second. The flutter of a butterfly wing. We want to allow you to have a five minute intermission before we do our two features which is beautiful. We have two lovely individuals here who are going to be featured, I'm going to give a brief description, and they're going to present their poetry. But right now, if you like water, fruit, cheese, or need to use the restroom, uh, you can take a, a five-minute interval, and then we can continue on and close out with our features. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Have a wonderful day. I'm back. I'm back. Yes. I'm back. I needed this in my life right now. <laughs> Okay, one, two, three, all righty. So thank you everyone for taking a, a little moment to socialize and connect and share your books and inspiration. And it is my pleasure now that we're moving to our closing features. We have two wonderful poets who are going to be featured. This is going to be their platform for them to share their poetry, a little bit of history of themselves. Ladies first, so we're going to go with our young lady. We support our youth in the city of Brockton and uh, we would gladly like to present, we would gladly like to present one of our Brockton High School students. She is 16 years old. Her name is Misu Yorvina Fofana. Was first introduced to writing from her English and poetry class this year. Poetry is more serious. Misu was asked to write poems on a variety of emotions and to analyze other ones. I admit, that my interest in literature has always subsisted me. From literature to music, I started writing on my own from any time because I realized that was my voice. I could reach a variety of people, but not as much as I would have liked to. But with my hands, my words, I can transcend time and transis, trans, transmit. I apologize, I'm getting tongue tied over here because I'm ready to call. Miss Sue over here, because these are actually her words. And for me, I don't want to say her words. I want her to come up and say her words. That's why my tongue is being tied, because it's all about promoting our youth. And if she's taking a moment, and as a woman, a woman of brown complexion, and as a woman in general, I like to inspire our youth in a diversity yes. format. It's not about our skin. It's not about our color. It's not about our gender. But it's important for young, beautiful ladies and our students to know this is for you as well. The future is in your hands. Yes. Masu Yervina Fofana, it is my pleasure. Welcome. Um, my name is Mesu, and I have um, a few poems to read for you. They, they are about um, a, vari a variety of themes, about love, about 
the system, about the world, about society. So I hope you enjoy. The first one, and I will tell you that my title, my I don't, I am not really good with titles, so I kind of put the titles for myself because they are fun to hear and they make me remember my own writing. So the first one is called the La 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 of Love. Love is pure, love is tender, love is heartful, love is gentle. But one needs to always surrender to love because love is a harsh battle. Such a waste that I love love, that I love you, that I love me, that I love us. But that us is broken like a broken symphony of sweet tunes, sweet love, but lacking harmony. Love is rich, love is free, love is vivid, love is thrilling. I hit the keys to the song of your liking, repeatedly hitting wrong, but endlessly craving to hear the melody sound right, when all feelings we fostered had only grown old and, le and old and left. Love is hard, hard to maintain. Love is boundless, bound to happen, never without pain or disdain, and flowing tears, a burden that cracks the core of, the car of all my fears, making me face the monsters that I hid behind stolen melodies, fake giggles, fake smiles, how I resent this lifestyle, fake me, fake you. We were never bound to be true. Love is sweet, love is selfish, love is selfless. Love is rubbish. My love and, lo and your love ma made melodies unfit to be together. Our love orchestras played solos, not a song for two. We were never bound to be true. Thank you. Yeah. This is the second. Um, the second one is shorter, but it's called Insecure. I sold my voice for a hymen, which purpose is either to be teared up or sued down. What a diversity of choices. That's it. This one is called Farinari Princess, but like the Farinari comes from a Susu um, word that is a Guinean language where I come from. So Farinari was a dance that rise, rose from um, the small um, cities, the rural environment, and like it's a dance that people, it's really, literally a bad dance, like Farinari means bad dance, but people really like it, and it's like, people of the high society don't really appreciate it, but the people from like the rural environment, they really love it, so that's why, you will see later on why I call this poem Farinari Princess. In my castle-like house, I was attracted by the dust outside, filling my eyes with curiosity, the dirty roads catching my sight, the kids' tires in hands, hunting cars, shouting, dancing, and me in my silence, my contemplation. I wanted the sound that could feel, feel my muffled half, looking for noise, movement, life. I wanted the dirt, I wanted to experience the fights in the streets, the racing games in the tall grass, the speed com competitions to climb the mango tree of my aunt's my aunt house. I wanted to do it all. All I couldn't touch, I wanted to. All I couldn't do, I dreamed of it. It was my human na nature emerging, yet I was still me, a living room doll existing only in its showcase, between the four glasses, seeing her dreams fly away, unable to ro the ro roll in the mud, but rather in glitter, preferring running barefoot on dented street instead of strutting in white pumps and shiny tiles at the sound of a waltz. You had everything, but you accepted to share. Then you lost it all trying to get more. You lost. <laughs> and this one is called Bella. It's from an artist called Maître James. Um, his song title was Bella, so I inspired myself from that to write this one. This one. She was a ray of sunshine during an eclipse. The brilliance of her smile gave me back my sight, erasing the blindness of my heart. Throwing, throwing my eyes light away, you were from me so far. You were the horizon I wanted to reach with my hands. I love you, I've always tend to say, only in my mind I did. Your name, Bella, your, your definition, it was. You were Bella, so beautiful. A witch with a sugar heart and me, Hansel, was enchanted. I can't but call you Bella. In my head, your voice resonates in a loop. Your name was everything you were. Bella, a queen with a smile, breath of freedom. Bella, your name for my heart was like a sweet melody. A bell at school ringing for only, only for the pleasure of the imprisoned kid I was. Every jingle of your, of your voice, Bella, was a breeze from heaven. 
and me just the man was more attracted to your scenes to, than to the paradise I was offered by your greens. Childish, we were impossibly twins. I wanted too much, I wanted you, me, all in love, but you, my Inanna, always wanted a ring dove. I wanted help for us to go and enjoy the pleasure of lust and love, but too pure you were to follow me, an angel. I wanted an angel, I wanted us to be a duo, but you were a helium ion bonding with fluorine. It chemically couldn't work between us. So I think um, you might have heard the song Let It Go from the movie, Disney movie Frozen. Yes. So this poem is inspired by that song. Um, the title is Frozen. Frozen. I am exhausted to hear let it go, let it go every time I say frozen because by frozen I mean like my situation. Let it go, let it go, I did let it flow but now I'm saying no because I am broke from letting go every inches of my own and my in a one-sided ratio and my person goes away in the jingle of the let it go, turning up my being half sold. I am frozen in my icy kingdom, cold and un unwelcoming, like the throne I am supposed to own. I am a princess, the princess you crowned me to be. And I should sing the song when something is wrong, as if in my tears I could find an answer. Trust me, you'll find everything but solace, for I tried many times. My swollen eyes still watering, my wet clothes, my wet dress always so shiny, and this cold breeze on my skin. I became a frozen princess, my tears frozen to the lashes of my eyes. I've went so far from, the, from my face, yet so close to your given mask. I wore longer than my own skin, a cool mask, a cold mask. I've worn it for so long that when I look at myself in the mirror, I see nothing but a stranger I observe in hover. This me you have created is picking on the me I was, who sees the sky captured in a wooden frame and laughs covered of those dusty, biased censorship called society rules. This poem is called Google Maps, but I just enjoyed calling it Google Maps. My tears sing swan lake when the, line on my, when the lines on my palm guide me on a one-way highway, and my stretch marks serving as a road map spread along undiscovered valleys. My journey seems endless when the drive -in, dr driveway next door is lined with tar and smashed by sturdy wheels. My bust is tightened, my soul empowered, and my heart invigorated. This one is a haiku called Last Summer Cloud. Um, it starts. Powdery pink veil, golden, ting golden tingles, sun-like sounds, downfalls on winter. Um, this one is called Best Friend and Imaginary Friend. Um, you will understand the meaning behind it at the very end of it. So. When I'm stressed, I imagine your skin under my fingers, twisting from left to right, and imagining the feeling that I would have felt, different from the one I feel, because the only one you gave me is pain. As acute as my cries when the last ashes get stuck, when, you, when your last ashes get stuck through the edges of a half-closed window, I miss you, and yet one could argue that I never knew you. You, my friend, who would fly in the sky when, I'm, when I would be happy, who would hang in the, in the air when my heart turned gray and would crash against your face when rage would own me. You are the symbol of my belonging and the emblem of my difference. I celebrate you in mourning, you mutil mutilated part of me that my fathers passed on to me polydactyly. So, I wrote this poem because I was born with 12 fingers and I wish my mom just li li left, left me with them, but it wasn't really living fingers, they were just dead, so at the hospital they just cut them off. But I think they're cute, so I wrote this poem to remember my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so this poem is from an African, Guinean writer. I wanted to read it because I've been reading this poem since I was little, since elementary school. We were memorizing it, and every time I read it, I felt like I was going back in my you know, childhood. But I translated um, it in, in English because it was originally written in French. It's called To My Mother. 
from the book, The Black Child. Black woman, African woman, oh my mother, I think of you. Oh Daman, oh my mother, you who carried me on your back, you who breastfed, breastfed me, you who monitored my first step, who, who first opened my eyes to the wonders of the earth, I, I think of you. Oh Daman, oh my mother, you who wept my tears, you who rejoiced my heart, you who patiently endured my whims, as I would still like to be near you, to be a child near you. Simple woman, woman of resign resignation, oh my mother, I think of you. Oh Dama, Dama of the great family of blacksmiths, my thought always turns to you, yours with each step accompanies me. Oh Dama, my mother, how I would like to be in your heat, be a child near you. Black woman, African woman, how <clears throat> African woman, oh my mother, thank you, thank you for everything you did for me, your son so far, so close to you. Woman of the fields, woman of the rivers, woman of the great river, oh you, my mother, I think of you. Aww. And this poem in French is called J'ai des fruits d'or by Victor Hugo, by Victor Hugo, meaning that I have golden, the title is in English, I have golden fruits. So I translated it in English for you guys. Come, I have golden fruits, I have roses, I will fill your little arms with them, I will tell you sweet things and maybe you will smile. And the child in the soft voice from life, forgetting the weight, dream and hurry to get off along the high side in the woods. There, pleasure in all form, the tree has its sweet, the, its, its fruits, the grass has flowers, he hears in the huge oak laughing quarrelsome birds. Um, this one is in French, but I didn't translate it in English yet, so I will just read it in French. This one? Ah, okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, this poem I wrote it from th uh, thinking about my mother. Then I made changes, and then now I give I give it to her for her birthday. It's called Le Pain. Je t'aurais appelé pain pour ton élégance meurtrière, pour ta fierté mal dosée et ta beauté majestueuse. Pain pour ta sensibilité aux traits de vanité, pour la couronne avec laquelle tu es né et tes alarmes aux airs mélodieux. Que, que, je, ne, que je ne puisse t'appeler pain pour la diversité de ton corsage, pour la modestie de ton personnage. Que je ne puisse dire la grandeur de ta personnalité pour il y a de mots valant ta description. Que l'on ne découvre tes bijoux et l'expose et les expose au vautour. Pour ton malheur, je ne cherche leur bonheur s'accomplir. Car je te veux éternel et tel quel, un pain dévoilant sa roue. Merci. I have this poem that I wrote for my grandmother and it's also in French, so I'll look it up. This one is for my father because I couldn't find the French version of the one for my grandmother, so it's inspired by an already written poem called Savoir, and I made modification and called it Savoir et Aimer. Papa, je voulais te demander autrefois pourquoi il y avait des enfants ici sans logis et moi dans un palais. Parce qu'il n'y a pas de guerre où tu n'as pas combattu pour placer cette couronne sur ma crinière. Te demander d'où venaient mes joies, mes rires et mes souvenirs qui survivaient dans les battements de tes martyrs. Te demander la différence entre les anémones et moi car tu étais le beau temps après mes nuits pluvieuses. Te demander pourquoi tu es né dans la paillette de la campagne lorsque tu es le roi de mon palais. Te dire combien je t'aime et combien j'ai hâte de te revoir. Te dire, te dire, oui, dire, car les mots ne suffisent pour exprimer tout l'amour que je te porte. Pour t'écrire oh combien tu es un bon père couvert de ton anneau de rose fanny. Je t'aime mon papa, je t'aime mon papounet. Je t'aime mon Rimka, bonne fête des pères. Thank you. This one is a poem that I, I think this is going to be my last poem. So I struggled while writing this poem because it is an answer to another poet's poem called The System. I heard it in class once and it really marked me. So I started writing this poem having that poem in mind. 
And I think it's still not finished because I feel like I can make it better, but I, I wanted to read it today. His, the, the poet's poem was called The System, so I made this one called The Virus. <laughs> we are the virus, unwanted in the server, you see, but too bad, we got it anyway. We are meant to survive in a system programmed to fail us, a system that no matter how performing, how improved, will never escape to our threats. Yes, we are the virus, the ones you once imprisoned in iron nets. We are the virus made of colored protein, a DNA too curly to be flattened into series of income to be mattered. Trying to, trying to soften our brains into straight wavy cables while your sole existence was to constrict with our presence. You have no real purpose without us. We are the virus. With those Afro-like trinkage of ours we duplicate inside any software, while for you it's so hard to bear that the so-called system exists only in itself. A pure program you see, but has your coding been just enough for so long? Red blood spill, dark scars healed, and golden hopes killed. A wild loop of the same song. Let's sound the gong, it's time to infect that cycle. Black charge, it's time to infect that cycle. Black charge rifles ready to shoot down obstacles. We are virus, not viruses, because one of us is enough to destroy your dynasty of companies and the infamy of your societies. Virus, because we have known enough of your divide and rule hacks and those individuality crafts you let us feed on, breathe in. Now we decide. We have got the knowledge in. No more targets in our backs. Wait for our comeback. We are the virus. You are the system, the trembling system. Insecure in your coding, frail in your compiling, while we are your nightmares. You feared us, fear our gigantic features, big legs, big nares, yet you're still there to claim control over the, over the server. It is known of all that all these revolution, evolutions, and perfection are but a product of our com corruption, corrupted to, the, corrupted to the bottom of your smallest code while we grow through our contagion. Once you, once you go black, you never come back. Thank you. <laughs> so, this was the virus. I am really glad to be here, and I'm happy that you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. It was a sincere pleasure. And keep smiling. You have such a beautiful smile, imprinted with dimples that provide um, brings out the quality of your uniqueness. And culture is very important, heritage is very important. And it's beautiful that you focus on um, translating, but I encourage you to also embrace, because this is um, Brockton local TV. Someone may be watching, may not even understand English. You said it in their language, they're inspired, like wow. We also have it for ourselves. So continue to embrace diversity, Bilingual, trilingual, all lingual, <laughs> no, no language. We can even speak with our hands, sign language. Looking forward for that poet. <laughs> and right now, it is my honor and my pleasure, again, to close out with a Cambridge poet. Cambridge is my hometown. I was born right in the heart of MIT and Harvard. So I am so excited to introduce Jean Danny Joaquim, but I'm going to give you a brief description of who he is. Then it's best to hear the words come out of his mouth. Cambridge poet populist from 2009 to 2011 is Jean Danny Joaquim, and the current poet in residence at First Church in Cambridge is also an author of short stories and plays. He created the Many Voices Projects, a series of readings and follow-up poetry workshops, inspiring conversations about race and equality. And he is going to come so he can give you more brief up of who he is and share the lovely poetry. Thank you very much. Greetings. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for you. I love poetry. I love reading. I love sharing my work. I, the selection of poetry that I prepare for you this evening will speak of immigration and the life of immigrants. I will ask you 
perhaps we can talk if you want when we finish, but I don't think it will work to collapse in between, but you'll feel it, you'll see. Okay. The first three poems are called Lamet, as if in lamentation. Lamet 26, Lamet 27, and Lamet 28. And the rest that I will read will also speak of immigrations or immigrants' life. Lamet 26. You never asked me why I came, but you simply call me immigrant. It never crosses your mind that the choice was never mine. You will never know the sacrifices. All that we own was sold to secure me the crossing ticket. I was the household's only hope. Yes, you sure don't know that so numerous were my dreams. I saw a vibrant land and us living well. I saw joy respect and equity, I saw peace. Father had already vanished as so many neighbors. There was a full hunt for young folks the regime tagged as enemies. You will never know the burden when all bets are on you as you are sent forward alone in the vast open world. You never ask why I came, you simply call me immigrant. Mother and sister cried when I left. I held my tears to end theirs. Here too, you don't know, many times I held my tears when grandma passed, I couldn't go. My papers were still being processed. Sorry. Sorry you don't know how dreadful staring constantly at abundance when knowing that your people struggle simply to get by. Sorry you were never told that long before I came your conquerors occupied us and left chaos behind. You never asked why I came, you called me immigrant because of my language, because I still speak of home, because I wander the streets, because of my early morning prayers, because I am at your school, because I am at your work, because I dare to be. It never crosses your mind that the choice was never mine. Lament, 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 27, Lament 27. When I arrived with my son, you were there at the bus stop waiting for the school bus, waiting with your granddaughter. When I said, good morning, your child answered. You stared straight ahead looking at nothing. Then my child looked at me then my child look at you. When quickly after another neighbor arrived with his two children as we waited at the bus stop, as we waited for the school bus. When he said, good morning, and you and your child and my child and I answered. And when you quickly after engage in conversation just with him, my child again look at me. My child again look at you. When after the school bus arrived and took our children to their school and you and the neighbor left to go to your plans for the day, I stood a little more at the bus stop. I stood there for a little more. I thought of cotton fields. I thought of sugar cane plantations. I thought of rice fields. I thought of tobacco, tobacco plantations. I thought of the sun high in the sky. I thought of hard labor, 
men and women side by side sweat and songs of lament, songs of revolt and liberation, and all the struggle. I thought of all the time past and the generations in between with the wealth generated, with the privileges inherited. Now I know that's our history. Now I know it's still breathing. Now I know, you certainly know. Lament 28, Lament 28. I sing my immigrant song for all migrants of the world, those in this very moment at peril of their lives crossing tunnels, borders, rivers, and even the high sea. For all of them in this exodus, fleeing hunger, repression, religious and political torment, for the migrants who never will make it to their destinations of hope, I sing my immigrant song, I am from the ocean. I sing my immigrant song for the bodies of migrant drones at sea or drag away in rivers, for their souls that will, without rest, continue the endless travel, passing across borders, tunnels, rivers, and even the high sea. For all migrants betrayed by their, by their guide and abandoned in no man's land, to face the harshest sides of nature. I sing my immigrant song, Wensi Petit Lambe. I sing my immigrant song for migrants in despair, crossing checks went and being turned away for their pain, their shame and humiliation, and for all migrants arrested and imprisoned. For all children migrants waiting at borders with their loss of innocence and the distress in their memory of their memory, I sing my immigrant song, I am from writing poetry. I sing my immigrant song for this land where I stand and for all of us, descendants of migrants, migrants from different times who made it to safer land Migrants who got established, migrants with wealth and power, migrants with ideas of safety, land protection, and more security, and more wealth, and more power. I sing my immigrant song for all of us, conveniently forgetting that we are all migrants passing through life. Immigrant, I am from the ocean, I am from sugar cane. I am from poetry. I am from happiness. I am words with no curves. I am the mainland with no boundaries. I am hope tainted with shadow. I am heavy rain. I am here. I am now. I am staying. Moi c'est petit lambe. Moi c'est petit chacun. Moi c'est petit poésie. Moi sorti dans triple la joie. Moi c'est paroles sans chapeau, moi c'est grand la cou, m'pa gen lisier. Moi c'est l'espoir qu'un ballon braille, moi c'est tempête la pluie, moi c'est ça ouais, moi c'est cougnier, m'pa fait yon pa kita, yon pa nago. That was lament 26, 27 and 28. I choose in this very moment to write this poetry and to speak of it because I believe as a member of this community, of this society where I live now, that is my country, my land, my place, I must speak of it. So thank you for receiving it. And I will read one last poem that's for my son who couldn't make it because he had swimming. 
And this poem goes like that. Dans la cocaille dodo, t'es gagné un petit oiseau qui pas de jambes volé haut. Chaque jour qui t'est passé, ses ailes il t'a veillé pour l'oué si y a poussé. Yon jour mercredi soir, t'es oiseau fin oué oua, il dit fol jour qui boit. Mais il pas de jambes qu'on est, si perdit grand chemin, t'es capable de bailler chagrin. Dans la cocaille dodo, t'es gagné un petit oiseau qui pas de jambes volé haut. Chaque jour qui t'est passé, ses ailes il t'a veillé pour l'oué si y a poussé. Yon jour mercredi soir, t'es oiseau fin oué oua, il dit fol jou ke bois, mais il pas de jambes qu'on est. Si perdit grand chemin, tu es capable de faire chagrin. Thank you. Merci. That was very beautiful. Thank you, Jean, again. Thank you, thank you. And I myself am a child, a product of our today's America, yesterday's America, and tomorrow, because we all have descendants of migration from all over the world. My mother came from El Salvador. My father came from the Dominican Republic. All Latinos are not the same. It's very South America, Central America, different parts. So I tell people, they're like, what are you? I say, you tell me, what am I? So I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm a product of America. That's why I was born in the middle of MIT and Harvard, because that's America, okay? <laughs> so, and um, because Central American is a different culture and a different heritage, and so is the Dominican Republic that shares an island with Haiti. And um, they totally speak two different styles. I am more of the slow pace, yet I am fast and I talk a lot. And um, which is part of the Dominican in me, probably. And I just want to take a moment to just thank everyone. We're closing. It was a very beautiful opening, a first time event. We have great things coming up ahead. I'm going to let Philip share the upcoming Voices of Diversity that we have going on in November. But I want to share what we have coming up in October. And I have that information for you, but I would like to allow Philip first to give his words and then we will close out with the upcoming event. Philip? Again, let's thank the Brockton Library and the director, Paul Engel, for giving us the space to express our truth, our emotions, and our words. Um, also to Mark Lindy, Brockton Community Access, for sharing this with our communities. Um, there is one event coming up. It will be Friday, November 1st. The library closes and is opening up just for this event. And we will have 10 poets speaking 10 different languages and then translating it into English. So they'll be speaking in the language of the heritage and then translating it into English. So we will have Arabic, Spanish, French, German, Greek, sign language, um, Hebrew, Yiddish, um, and also um, to celebrate our diversity, um, the local Greek dance group will perform in their full regalia. So they'll have the, the costumes of, of, the, um, of, of Greece. And the Haitian choir from the uh, Brockton Tabernacle Church, um, Pastor Joseph Polycape um, was so kind enough, kind to um, get us the Haitian choir. So they'll be performing. So it's a night of diversity, a night of celebration. We have song, we have dance, we have words, and this is what our city is about. So um, thank you for all coming. I hope to see you everybody again in October. And as I say, let's fill the room. Okay? I Okay, 
So I am back in closing officially. <laughs> and um, thank you everyone for coming. It was a true pleasure. Our next upcoming Everyone Has a Voice Saturday series is October 19th, same time, same location here. And uh, we are going to welcome Christina Liu, Carly de Miranda Paris, and Open Mic. And we continue to encourage you. You, you are not featured, but you are featured. Because here, Open Mic is featuring you. So return and come back and let's share and connect with each other. Share your contact information. And most of all, Brockton, local communities and cities, you watching this on TV? You want to be part of us? You're not able to make your way? Ali Brioso, on behalf of Everyone Has a Voice, Brockton Public Library, I can give you my phone number, 508-857-7951. My line is open for all. We're here to embrace you. Come share your words. You don't know how. We have expressive healings workshops. Philip Hesaurus is awesome in the teachings. We work with the Bro uh, Brockton Boys and Girls Club on that and throughout various sectors in our community to allow and help people who may be struggling with writer's block or any form of inabilities that keeps them from coming out with expressive words. We're here for you. Contact us, call us. Let everyone truly have a voice to be spoken in our community.